So for today's lesson, we are going to be going over the scientific method. So most of you are probably already familiar with the scientific method. It is a tool that we use, not just in science, but in everyday life, to study things. So uh, this really is a, kind of a misnomer. It's not just for the scientific community. Really, you can use this for just about anything. And that's because it's got some very generic basic steps that we use to problem solve. So problem solving is something that we probably do every day. So the first thing we do when we're problem solving is we need a question. So we need to know what are we trying to find out. So this can be done by either asking a question or maybe making an observation. After that, we write a hypothesis. A hypothesis usually is in the form of an if-then statement. If this happens, then this will also happen. So we will be using the if-then statements for our hypotheses. Once we've made a hypothesis, we can make predictions. So predictions are what we think is going to happen. Then you follow up with your experiment, and finally, you draw conclusions. So let's look at an example. So this is kind of a real life example. So I grew up with dogs. Okay, I'm an animal lover. I love everything to do with cute little furry critters. Okay, so let's say I look outside one day and I notice that the dog is panting. Okay, I don't know, is the dog panting? because he was running, maybe he was chasing a squirrel, is it hot outside, does he have any water in his bowl, why is the dog panting? So I'm going to follow the scientific method to figure out what is wrong with my dog. All right, so I'm gonna ask a question. So the question might be, why is the dog panting? Or you could make an observation. The dog is panting. Next, I'm going to write a hypothesis for this scenario. I'm going to do an if then. Let's say if the dog is given water to drink then it will stop panting. That would be a hypothesis. If I do this, then this will happen. So a good hypothesis needs to have both of those parts in order to function truly as a hypothesis. This is the statement that you are going to be testing in step four. Next, you're going to make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen? My prediction, I think that the dog will stop panting if I bring it water. Okay, next I can test that out. I can test out my hypothesis. If I give the dog water, then the dog will stop panting. So I'm going to test that. Give the dog water to drink. Simple as that. Finally, I'm going to draw my conclusions. And to do this, I'm going to look back at what the experiment told me. Okay, so in the experiment, we're really also collecting data. Okay, so we're collecting data. So give the dog water to drink. Observe. 
the dog stops panting. The dog is no longer breathing hard with its tongue hanging out. Finally, I draw my conclusion. So I look at what the data told me. I gave the dog water, dog stopped panting. Conclusion, the dog was thirsty. Period. Now, obviously, sometimes the experiments are more complex. Sometimes there's not a direct answer. Sometimes it gets complicated, just like life does. But this is an example of how we could use the scientific method in everyday life. Um, really, it's just as simple as figuring out what are you trying to determine? How are you going to determine this? What do you think is going to happen? Test it out. How did it work? All right, so I hope that helped uh, with reviewing the scientific method, and there will be an assignment for you to complete based on this.